to go the other way, right? It, the Holy Spirit is, is the, the reason that any of this stuff works. So the Holy Spirit is the reason that anybody even listens to this stuff, right? You can't get to the other side and say, well, I haven't studied enough. And uh, man, get, get off your high horse, if you will. It's not up to you for that person to, to turn to the Lord. Yes, the Lord might use you to deliver a message, but that's it. That, everything else, you, you, you bring the good news. Christ, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died for you. Say that to somebody, right? And that, that, that's enough to, to, um, for somebody, for the Holy Spirit to use. The Holy Spirit doesn't even need that, but if the Holy Spirit can use you. And we can't think that just because we don't know something or can't argue well or can't speak well, like Moses. Remember, Moses said, I can't speak, so I don't want to go to Pharaoh. What did the Lord say? Don't worry about it. I got that covered. All right? He used his brother Aaron. But it did not absolve Moses of the responsibility that God put on him, did it? No, Moses still had to go. He had his troubles. He had his uh, difficulties. But the Lord said, no, you're not getting out of it. Right? I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity here. If the Lord tells us to witness to somebody and you don't know what to say, just tell them Jesus loves you. Right? But the Holy Spirit can use that in amazing ways. We were singing this song this morning. I was saying a hundred times. Uh, 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 God is good. And just talking about the goodness of God. Good grief. I've, I've seen that so many times. But there are times when I'll sing that, that phrase will just hit me. And that's, that not, that's not because I've sang it a hundred times or a thousand times. That's because the Holy Spirit says, guess what? I'm going to use this today just to touch your life a little bit. That's the Holy Spirit that does those things. All right? we, can't, we can't say that and put it on ourselves. If somebody doesn't come to the Lord because we've been praying for them or whatever, then it's our fault. That's not up to us. All right? And if it was up to us, we'd mess it up. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but Jesus told his disciples, just go out there and say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? And that's how they're going to spread the gospel. My goodness. Uh, if you look at how quickly the gospel spread, even just in, during the lifetime of Paul. Paul went out from Israel, and guess what he did? He went out from there, started churches uh, uh, just all over the place. In Asia, uh, some folks say that he even got up to England. Um, it's speculation, but you know, he got out to Spain. But churches started all over the place. So much more than what we see even here in the Bible. You know, churches started off with the, the words of Paul and the missionaries that were saved by Paul. It started like, it was like wildfire. So off of, off of Jesus sending them out. And then he said in verse 8, he says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely, uh, freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither silver nor gold, nor copper in your, mo copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor tun tun tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Now I like this. I like this here. It says, freely give. At the end there, verse 8, it says, freely you have received, freely give. Right now, there, this is one thing I've thought about for, for years. Um, I had a friend of mine that he put out a book. Um, he printed a book, and he's, uh, as far as I know, it, it's doing pretty well. But it's you know it's on Christian matters. But I used to somewhat struggle with that, and it's not between me and him. It's between him and the Lord. Now it's just something I thought about. I was thinking like if the Lord gave you the know-how, if you were the words to write a book, and you sold that book and made a million dollars, say right, or however much became bestsellers list. Is that going against this verse we just read here? Because the Bible says, freely give, or you have received, um, verse 8 says, freely you have received, freely give. Is it seem right? So, no, I don't know. It's just something I'm speculating on. I'll let you all chew on that one because I don't know. Um, I've seen some instances. One, one author I really enjoy is uh, David Jeremiah. We've, we've even looked at some of his books and talked about it with some of y'all. But this guy's written all kinds of books. And the way he, the way he writes his books is interesting. Um, he does something that I don't personally like. And, and this is a pet peeve of mine, and I don't, that, that doesn't mean anybody else should like it. You, it doesn't matter. Um, but how he writes his sermons, he writes it down word for word. And then he'll go in his office and practice it. And when he preaches a sermon, he reads it word for word. He's done that ever for years. That's what he's done. He made a commitment to God that that's what he was going to do ever since he was young. And that's not for me to say it again. That's one of those things between him and the Lord, and that's just something I don't personally like. Big deal. Who cares? But, um, but anyway, all the books that he's written, if you go and look and see all the books he's written, his testimony is that every time he, the Lord puts it on his heart to write a book, he goes back through his sermon notes and pulls certain sermons on topics, and that's how he writes his book, because it's already written out. There's not really much else to do. He wrote it years ago. He's got them all stacked up, so he just goes and gets them out, sorts them out, and hey, here's another book, you know? And I don't know how much money he keeps. I don't, I don't care. But like I said, that's just speculation for myself that I thought about, and we can think about that. But he's written all kinds of books, right? And, and is it right for him to keep all the money if the Lord's the one that gave it to him? I don't know. Something to chew on. I know um, John Wesley, the founder of, of the Methodist Church. He, um, he, oh goodness, let me remember. He wrote, he wrote all kinds of books during his life. And even as uh, this was back during a time when a person could comfortably live off of sixty dollars a day, 
or sixty dollars a year. Excuse me. He could, a person a person could live off sixty dollars a year back in this time. Well, off of his book sales, he was making uh, twenty eight hundred. I think I think the figure I saw the upwards of three thousand dollars a year. I mean, that's how many times? Forty five times uh, or so, fifty times what what a normal person can live off of, right? But but the testimony goes and the story goes that he had this little modest house that was just right across from the church that he would preach at. A uh, real small house. Uh, they made it to a museum in England. Uh, but he, he, they said that he would donate his money, 75 to 80 percent of all everything he took in, and the, the rest of the money he took was for him to live and for him to upkeep the church. That's what he, that's what he took money for, uh, off of all his book sales, and that's what the Lord led him to do, right? So, but uh, it's just something to chew on. Um, freely you have received, freely we should give. Um, and then there at the end of verse 10, it's one of my favorite things. It says, "For a worker is worthy of his food, right? A worker is worthy of his food." Now. One thing we can't do is get this confused. Uh, I, I've said this before. Um, if you if you don't work, you don't eat. You know, it's kind of an easy way easy way to put it. Right now, you can't get that confused with it if you're unable to work, you don't eat. Now that's not what the Bible says. If you it's more more appropriately to say if you're unwilling to work. Now some people try to hide behind I am unable. Right? Some we can see through that many times. Uh, but don't get that confused. If someone's unwilling to work, they shouldn't eat. That's you know that's what the Bible says. Um, but if they're unable, that's that's a whole different whole different issue. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we get people out there sometimes that you all know this. I'm, I've talked about this past, so I'll stick to it. But you know, people just don't want to work. You know, shouldn't eat. All right, you need to get out there and work. Working is important. Let's look at verse 11. Well, we'll get through this and we'll um, we'll close here. It says, "Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out." And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. Now, this kind of goes along those lines of things we talked about in the past that uh, the ancient Jews or the, the older Jewish uh, society would believe that words held power, that words are actually alive. So if you went into a house, uh, one, of the, one of the common greetings, and even in some other countries that I know of, that they, some of their greetings involve sayings like, peace be to you, you know, or Lord bless you. You know, and, and they'll say things like that. Even in greeting and even in parting, they make sure that they put a blessing on that person. But Jesus is telling them, he says, hey, if you go somewhere and they don't receive you, don't, don't waste your time. Don't, don't, don't give your words, if you will. Don't give your blessing to these people. Verse 12 again says, when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. Or surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable, tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now, what is what is Jesus telling them here? It's like we don't got time. We got a lot to do. We got a lot to do. We got to get the gospel out. If you go to a place and they don't want to hear it, shit, forget it. Move on. Right? Move on. It's not up to us to, to convince people. Now, now I will say this: if the Lord puts it on your heart to be uh, a part of that process of convincing someone, then fine. But if you cannot convince someone, my point being, you can't take it on yourself and say, I wasn't able to convince them. But I, don't, I hope, I mean, it's not really up to you, right? Again, going back to that point I made earlier, it's not up to us to convince. We might be part of that process, right? The Holy Spirit might use us. But at the same time, if it doesn't work out, then that's, that's not up to you. The Lord says if they reject it, shake the dust off your feet and move on. you got other people that need to hear the gospel. You know, to, to, that doesn't mean treat them uh, wrongly or to shun them or to not love them. But... Jesus says, just don't move on. Put your efforts elsewhere. Don't cast your pearls before swine, the book of Matthew says, right? So you just gotta you gotta just give have that know-how. And how are we supposed to have that wisdom? How are we supposed to have that wisdom that we're supposed to move on or to stay there? And what it comes with just with walking with the Lord. I'm never gonna know what my wife wants me to do if I never talk to her, right? If we don't spend time talking and and all these other things and giving gifts and you know, whatever makes us close. Right? If we, if, I don't, if we don't spend time cultivating that relationship, we're not going to get to know each other very well. Right? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Got a wife that's very compatible with me and patient with me. That's the biggest part. Right? But at the same time, if we never make an effort to cultivate that relationship, I'll never be able to, to be able to have insight to what her needs are, to try to anticipate what her needs might be, and to try to, to do things for her that, 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 that she likes. How am I supposed to know that unless I have a relationship with her, a conversation, or cultivate that. It's the same thing with the Lord. If we don't cultivate our relationship with Jesus, we're not going to know what His will is. We're not going to know when He wants to give us a kick in the pants to get something rolling, or 
or, or when he wants us to do this or do that, right? Um, we have to walk with Christ to know these things. If we're witnesses to somebody and it feels like we're spinning our wheels, ask the Lord, hey, Lord, should I keep on this or should I move on? Because one thing a person will never forget in their entire lives, the Bible even says it's written on their hearts, that they know that Christ is living. They know that there's God. They know that there is an emptiness in their life that only God can fill. That's written on everybody's heart. The Bible talks about in the book of Romans. So, yes, we can. the Lord can use us to bring that memory out, if you will, or to bring that realization out. But at the same time, like I said earlier, it's not up to us to, to, to keep, carry on that fight if the Lord's not in it. If the Lord's not in it, leave, leave it alone. They're not going to forget it. Trust me, they're not going to forget the message. They're not going to forget all the prayers. They're not going to forget the love that you show these people. They won't forget those things. All right? They might say they forget it. It might seem like it, but they, they won't. Trust me, they will not forget it. Um, but again, we don't, we don't know when to move on if we're not walking with the Lord. Make sure you read your Bible. I know we, we looked at a lot of different topics today. Um, sometimes in our studies, Jesus, I mean, in his short time uh, with the apostles, he tried to teach them all he could. Uh, the Bible even says that if everything that Jesus taught and, and did was recorded, there wouldn't be enough room in all the books in the world to contain it. Right? So Jesus, he was on like fast-tracking his disciples. Man, learn this, learn that, learn this, learn that. And sometimes when we come to a place in the Bible, you'll see all kinds of different things pop out of you. Boom, 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 boom. You know, it's kind of what Matthew chapter 10 is. Next week, uh, Jesus starts talking to him about persecution. You know, the people, people might not like you, you know. Um, we'll talk about that next week. But like I said, we, we covered a lot of topics. Um, make sure you read your Bibles. Uh, set your alarm 10 minutes early if you have to. One of the things I've, I've, habits I've gotten into, I don't like this habit, but I've gotten into this habit. Um, I like having something to read, like physical, like this. That's just, that's just me. But I've gotten in the habit, as soon as my alarm goes off, I'll grab my phone, and I have a little Bible app on here, and it keeps where I'm reading at, and I'll, just, I'll read a chapter, make sure I don't forget. All right? I, just, I don't like that because it's my phone. Like I like something physical, but that's just what I've gotten in the habit of doing. Um, so read your Bible. Set your alarm 10 minutes early, 15 minutes, whatever. Say a prayer to the Lord that he will look out for your day. As you're getting ready, if you're running late, talk to the Lord. You know, if, if uh, sometimes I'm talking to the Lord because Angel's not up yet and I'm getting ready, and I'm, I just talk to the Lord. Lord, where's my shoes at? You know, uh, where, I can't find my shoe. Lord, help me find it. My keys. I, I do that all the time. But keep the Lord part of your life. Keep him in. Treat him like he's, of course he's God, but at the same time, treat him like he's also your best friend. Somebody's just there to talk to you, to help you along. All right, that's, that's who he's supposed to be. The Bible says that uh, he not, he's not only Lord of the universe, but he's also the, uh, the Bible says that we can cry, Abba, Father, which is neat because that's a, that's a phrase that young children would use when they would go running up to their dad to go sit on his lap. Abba, Father. That's, that's, all, that's how our relationship with the Lord of the universe uh, is to be. I think that's, that's a neat thing to think about. Jesus had a lot to teach. Right? The preacher could not teach every single topic of the Bible if, if he had a lifetime of Sundays. Couldn't do it. So while the preacher is responsible for, for giving the word that the Lord gives him on Sundays, it's up to us to continue the study. It's up to us to, I, I can't be responsible for your walk with the Lord. I can encourage, I can give you tidbits of wisdom. Uh, if you need things, uh, myself, even the deacons, if y'all need advice, wisdom, whatever, we'll, we'll give it freely, freely, freely receive, freely give it. But at the same time, it's not our responsibility on a daily basis to make sure that you are uh, walking with the Lord. That's an individual responsibility. Right? The Bible calls perseverance. We persevere. Uh, we make it work. All right. I guess that's it. All right. I'm going to turn it over to Angela. We'll sing a closing song, and I'll come back up, and we'll just miss some prayer. This is a song that we do, you guys. It's one that um, our family has really enjoyed. <clears throat> and I think one of the things that has blessed my heart the most is um, hearing our kids run around the house singing it and humming it and singing it some more. And uh, as you'll notice, it kind of sticks in your head, so um, I hope it blesses you like it's blessed us.
texting, emails, Facebook, I don't care. Just be in contact with one another. Uh, let your presence be known to one another. Uh, the church is a place where um, it's not just, it's not a building. It's nice to have a building. Uh, but the church is, is something we should be able to lean on as individuals, right? And if we can lean on each other, like I said, if it's through Facebook, through phone calls, through whatever, and if that's the means that we're 